morning, everybody. It's so nice to see you all on such a rainy day. Oh, my goodness. You know, I love my window in my office, but it's not so helpful today because I just been thinking I need a nap. So anyway, very grateful to the Lord for giving us the rain. It's just a lot today. And so thank you. Thank you for coming out. Very excited about our Fine Arts Assembly. Uh, we've got some amazingly talented students that the Lord has put uh, specific in the area of the fine arts and so very excited about uh, getting to display those today so uh, we will go ahead and get started we'll start with the pledge and prayers so will you please stand oh, to the american flag attention salute pledge Attention, salute, pledge. wet morning, but it's uh, a really good morning to uh, listen to music and see what all the fine arts program are doing. This is the 5th uh, and 6th grade uh, CHA band, and the first number we'll play is kind of a warm-up tune. It's called Rhythm Riddle. Thank you. 
one is called Surprise Symphony. Uh, there's one major that should be kind of a surprise. The only way that the surprise works is if everything is fairly soft, except for that one major. If we just play the one major loud, all it does is have a bad sound. So hopefully we can play it soft and give you a surprise.
number will be Blues Adventure. We'll play the melody, we'll play the harmony, and then we'll split them up so that some play the harmony, some play the melody. Student um, 
exemplified this in several places, but to the degree that it stuck in her heart enough that she started to paint it into her images. So if you look in the third grade um, art show after this, you'll see it, that she painted this onto a cake. So Fearlessly Try Award goes to Hartley Death. Our next award goes for the Redeem Mistakes character quality. So this is someone who has regularly maybe um, had a really great plan in mind, and then as things got on paper and changed, they were willing to add other creative solutions. If something didn't go quite the way they wanted to originally, they would just go ahead and shift, and they just had the mental capacity to do that really well repeatedly. And you can tell because when we were hanging the art show, we couldn't decide which one to hang. There's too many good options type of a kid. Um, so this art award goes to Hudson Gramley. <laughs> Our third award is the Artist Attitude Studying Not Looking. So this student is a little bit opposite in that he doesn't always finish his projects because he's taking so much time and has such good mental concern for what he's trying to mirror, and he takes the time to slow down and study, um, but everything's excellent that he does. And I just wish my art class could be longer. Um, there's a few like that, if they just had 10 more minutes. Um, but I'm so grateful that he slows down, and again, I didn't say this before, but all these attitudes reflect some kind of quality of Christ and how he treats us. And so especially studying, not looking, is one that we remember that Jesus cares about all the details of our lives. He didn't just kind of make people go cool, make people, there they are, you know. He really cares about the small details of our lives and the hairs on our heads and all those things. So I really appreciate that this student does that. He is concerned about the details before he makes an excellent artwork. This one goes to Creed Cargill. The last one is Mirror the Master. So this student, when we've studied famous artwork, or if I am the master artist in the room on that project, it was something I generated myself, they're very careful to use these other artist attitudes, but they're really trying to imitate the master's techniques or whatever aspect of that master artwork that we're trying to imitate just to grow and expand. And typically, it's very hard things. Um, the student also does it just in their free art. They'll walk around the room and just quickly imitate some incredible thing, and it blows me away because I might have actually been too scared to try that one myself. So I've been so impressed by this attitude in him. This one goes to Eli Holzhauser. ticket to give you, so parents, you can call me. I'll take them to the museum if you need them. My help getting them there this summer. So these are our artist attitudes. Give them one more round of applause. I'm sorry. Um, up next, we have a dramatic uh, presentation of a speech that you know or have heard of. Um, and it is by Patrick Henry, and I just lost my notes. Okay, thank you. It is going to be performed by Spencer Tedro. So, Spencer, come on. St. John's Church, Richmond, Virginia, March 23rd, 1775. 
Sir, we have done everything that could be done to avert the storm which is now coming on. We have petitioned, we have remonstrated, we have supplicated, we have prostrated ourselves before the throne and have implored its interposition to arrest the tyrannical hands of the ministry and parliament. Our petitions have been slighted, and our remonstrances have produced additional violence and insult. Our supplications have been disregarded, and we have been spurned with contempt from the foot of the throne. In vain, after these things, may we indulge in the fond hope of peace and reconciliation. There is no longer any room for hope. If we wish to be free, if we mean to preserve invalid, those inestimable privileges which we have been so long contending, if we mean not basely to abandon the noble struggle, which we have been so long engaged, and which we have pledged ourselves never to abandon until the glorious object of our contest shall be obtained. We must fight! I repeat it, sir. We must fight. An appeal to arms and to the God of hosts is all that has left us. They tell us, sir, that we are weak, unable to cope with so formidable an adversary. But when will we be stronger? Will it be the next week or the next year? Or when we are totally disarmed and British guard stationed at every house? It is in vain, sir, to extenuate the matter. Gentlemen may cry, peace, peace, but there is no peace. The war has actually begun. The next gale that sweeps from the north will bring to our ears the clash of resounding arms. Our brethren are already in the field. Why stand we here idle? What is it that gentlemen wish? What would they have? Is life so dear? Is peace so sweet? As we purchase at the cost of chains of slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I don't know what courses others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. seeing this speech meet this year. Um, it's been a few years since CHA has been able to participate. There hasn't been a host school in our region, but COVID actually gave us the opportunity to do this virtually. I've heard that speech now maybe five times, and I, he literally gives me goosebumps every time. Um, this is what we want to encourage in our students. Um, briefly, there were six uh, schools who competed in the ACSI speech meet in our region. And um, their objectives are to encourage effective speech in an audience situation. So Spencer's the only one who actually had a real audience um, today, and so we're thankful that he got to perform that for you. Um, we also want to help students develop techniques to speak audibly, articulately, expressively, and with poise and confidence. And I think we saw a good example of that today. Ultimately, we want to encourage students to use their speaking abilities to communicate God's word and their Christian faith. So being a clear communicator can be used by the Lord, and that's what we want to encourage. So briefly, um, we just got results yesterday, um, and so we haven't had a lot. We don't even have ribbons today, but I do just want um, the students, when I call your name, to come and just stand along the floor down here when, um, as I call your name, those who participated in the speech meet this year. And then I will acknowledge a few who won superior ratings. So, and just save your applause because I'll just keep reading all their names as they come and line the floor. So in first grade, we had two, um, Aspen Sanders and Caleb Renfro for Bible memorization. You may come stand down here. In second grade, Gabe Ponce is Isaiah Kerbo, Emma Long, Kaysen Tedro and Ruby Kaiser. In third grade, Eli Ponce, Gentry Marshall, Vivian Tedro. In fourth grade, we had Loden Harshaw and Ella Tyler. Fifth grade, Kezi Gines, Ryder Brown, Elizabeth Swinford, Libby Grace Newthman, Lennon Baker, Hattie Spurgeon, Faith Bryan. And then in sixth grade, Jaden Roberts, Spencer Tedro, and Junie Clough. Let's give them all a round of applause for participating. And then there were six students who um, earned a rating. The judges were from all the different regions combined, and so they were not just judged by our school. In fact, some of them weren't judged by anyone from our school at all. 
Um, there were six who won a superior rating, and so if those six, when I call your name, if you would come stand up here, that is the highest rating that you can get um, in the speech meet. So, uh, for second grade, Bible memorization, Isaiah Kerbo. Fifth grade, Bible memorization, Kessie Gines. Fifth grade, Bible prose, Ryder Brown. Fifth grade, patriotic oration, Libby Grace Newthman. She also scored the highest overall in her category, winning first place. Um, fifth grade poetry, Faith Bryan. And sixth grade patriotic oration, first place, superior rating, Spencer Tedrow. we do to assist in learning to read notes and learning to read rhythms and melodies and actually make those um, translate into an instrument as we study recorder in the second semester. And one of the, the perks for studying is to give some practice points for your class. So we have a contest. And the contest is between third and fourth grade. So there are four classes going head to head. And this year, the third graders were really enthusiastic about practicing. And so I wanted to, to give awards for the, the two classes, the, the second place class and the first place class for practicing. And what I'd like to do is when I call your class, I'd like for your teacher to come up and get the trophy. This trophy will sit in your class for this next week to remind you of a job well done. And so your class can stand when your class is, is recognized. In second place for Recorder Championship is Mrs. Champion's class. And in first place, Mrs. Hardin's class. chart and see who was ahead and Mrs. Harden's class just blazed through. So we are proud of them. Let's give them all one more round. Another thing that we do to encourage um, creativity in our arts is to host a songwriting contest just with our, within our school, within our elementary every year. And I really believe that, that seeing what God has put into our students, seeing what comes out, is just such an indication of their hearts and also of their skills. Because to write a song, you've got to have the heart, but you've also got to have the skills to do it. So I'm excited to see students growing in skill. Um, today, we will see one of our contest winners. We don't have time to see all three, so we get to see those next fall in chapel, a couple of them. But we want to recognize them all today. So to this year, we had three judges. It was Mr. Lanny Skulls, our band director, Mrs. Janet Stagner, who is a former music teacher here at CHA, and then Mr. Stephen Hartman, who will become our secondary choral director as of next year. And they are such wonderful, encouraging judges, but also speak good truth and help our students grow. So I wanted to thank them for their, their wonderful skills in judging. And so the lower category winner with the song, Thank You Jesus, it was Bright and Clay. We will hear that in one of our early chapels next fall. Our um, upper division vocal category winner, this is fourth grader, Landry, uh, Charlie, Charlie Kate Sims. Come on up, Charlie. Good job. And in 
in the fall when Charlie Kate performs, she will play her guitar and she's also going to be assisted by her friend Ella Tyler when they sing. And then our final uh, Upper Instrumental Division winner is Leighton Wells. Congratulations, songwriters. Let's give them all one more hand. As our vocal winners go to their seats, Leighton is going to take the drum set, and we are going to get to hear his winning solo. Championship Awards. Now we get to hear those recorder champions sing and play in Yonder Come Day.
everybody to go ahead and come up and get into their positions. And I, I want to point out, as they are coming, you, you will see them in all, all different capacities for this song. This song, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. This was one of my favorite hymns when I was a child, and I remember hearing it at church and thinking, um, take my hands and let me let them move. Those are my hands. I'm, I'm playing the piano. Or take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Those are my feet when I'm dancing. And I love this because I feel like for all of the arts, but not just the arts, but all of life, I think that you will find yourself in this hymn somewhere in whatever gift God has given you. Just like we've talked about to our students, whatever God has given them, we want God to use that gift. We want to consecrate it back to Him. So today you're going to see some hands. You're going to see some feet. You're going to hear voices. You're going to see some, some intellect shown. And I'd like for you, as you're listening today, to think about where you are in this song and how you can give those gifts back to the Lord as well.
just, I just wanted to, to say um, how, what a blessing this drumline has been to me today. This is our second semester drumline. First semester was the very first one we've had in elementary. And, uh, oh, they, they were such a fun, talented group. And this group has been as well. And each, each group has their own personality and has their own strengths. And so today, fifth grade drumline presents Reason. Roberts, I consider her a collage artist because what she does with music is always intertwining things amazingly. Um, so thank you for that. That was lovely. Um, we have uh, the opportunity.
opportunity to take students every year to compete in a regional show, and again with COVID that was different. And so um, the virtual show, unfortunately, is still, we're waiting on some judging scores for that show, but I do want to take time to just bring up those students up and um, honor them. Their artwork is hanging on display there in the chapel lobby, so I encourage you to go look at it. These are students that I have hand-selected to go represent our school because they've consistently shown quality work. So as I read these names, students, if you'll just come and stand along this um, bottom step and we'll um, hold our applause and get them all up here. And then we'll move on to the elementary art show. So our first um, one that represented us to the regional show was Allie Lord from Kindergarten. We also had Soraya Wilkinson from Kindergarten. So if you'll just come stand here. From first grade, we had Olivia Lee, Hannah Nguyen, and Caleb Renfro. In second grade, we had Brian Trump. In third grade, we had Zarin Jackson, Madeline Walsh, and Anna Blunt. In fourth grade, we had Gavin Craig and Emily McGee. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a few more. My list was out of order. Fourth grade also had um, Madden Castro and Lily Carpenter. In fifth grade, representing us, we had Ellie Spangler, Leah Vogler, Faith Bryan, Hudson White, and Hudson Gramley. For sixth grade, um, I actually had too many, so I had to send a few of them to compete against secondary students in the show. Um, so the ones that competed in the sixth grade division were Eli Holshauser and Ray Lee Buff. And the two that competed in the middle school, the upper level division, were Taylor Benedicts and Madeline McConnell. So just want to give another quick thank you students for showing excellence so consistently that I could take your work um, to compete against other schools. As soon as we get the full results back, um, I'll get that home to parents and um, we'll have some ribbons for you. Okay, so let's give them one round of applause. For them. until early next week, and then I need to get it to you to go home. So it's a little bit of a shorter-lived experience than I'd like. But these students um, are for, this is all students that I teach. They come and work all throughout the year, and I know my little ones in particular, it's hard for them. I don't let them send or take artwork home to mom and dad and show off what they've been doing. And so you're probably seeing a lot of um, wacky-looking free art make it home and wonder what the world um, but there's a lot of purpose behind the things that um, we're creating as our lesson projects. They're all connecting to elements of art or principles of design. All things that we want them, whether or not they grow up and continue art pursuits or not, that they have the reasoning behind what is good and what is not. And so that's why in this show I take the time to hang something from every student. Upper level students have the hard task of trying to choose what they submit themselves. And that's really fun, but hard on the judges, um, especially in those fourth, fifth, sixth grade. I really encourage you to go look. It's very hard to judge this show because there's a variety of options of projects. Um, and they just do so well that we end up with a lot of ties. And so well done, students. You made it very hard on the judges this year that they had a very hard time choosing. What the judges are tasked at doing is looking at a grade and then ordering it from first, second, third place. And then first place gets a certain amount of points, second, the next amount of points, and third, the, the smallest amount. 
and that goes into a big grand spreadsheet for me, and we come up with our winners. So there'll be grade level winners, and then the student who has scored the most overall points becomes our best in show. So without further ado, I'm going to start with kindergarten. And so if I could get these announced, and then um, they're going to get a ribbon from me, and then a little packet of um, a fun pencil and some um, tickets to art museum as well. And so if you've got ladies, would just help them come over this way. And if you'll cheer for the whole grade after we get them all announced, and we'll cheer by grade. Okay, so for kindergarten, our third place was tied for Olivia Trosper and Benjamin Brown. So if you'll come up. Our second place goes to Ella June Kozak. Our first place for kindergarten is Raylan Clay. Good job, kindergarten. First grade, our third place winner is Hannah Wynn. Our second place winner is Jocelyn Wynn. And our first place goes to Olivia Lee. For second grade, our third place goes to Finnick Martin. Second place goes to Kaysen Tedro. And first place goes to Barrett Koenig. Had a tie for uh, third place. It goes to Quade Dipton and Caroline Walsh. Second place goes to Cooper Swarnton. And first place goes to Jabez Singh. For fourth grade, our third place goes to Lily Carpenter. Madden Castro and Naomi Roberts. Our first place goes to Gavin Craig. Fifth grade, our third place goes to Joshua Scales. Our second place goes to Faith Bryan. First place goes to Ellie Spangler. For sixth grade, our third place goes to Taylor Benedict. There's a tie in second place. It goes to Eli Holzhauser and Sydney Whitnam. And our first place for sixth grade goes to Madeline McConnell. One more big round of applause. Thank you. Freeze for just a second. We'll make sure we got everything handed out. So our best in show again. They have won the most points overall. And this Swaffer Gallery is what, if you come up near my elementary art room, there's some um, framed images along the hallway. That is our Swaffer Gallery. It's in honor of one of our early art teachers. She is responsible for the lovely murals that are for, throughout the building and taught here many years. And we're grateful to try to um, imitate some of her craftsmanship in class. So this winner will get a big art gift from me. And then we will also be putting his on permanent display. So the best in show was Gavin Craig. Okay, thank you so much. And again, I invite you to come view the show before you go today.
CHA, one of our one of our favorite key individuals, especially in the music department, is to teach about Johann Sebastian Bach. And Bach wanted all of the music that he composed to be for the glory of God alone. And on many of his pieces of music, he would write SDG, which abbreviates in Latin Soli Deo Gloria, which means glory to God alone. And one of his quotes, and I'll quote it very loosely, but he said, the sole purpose and aim of music is for the glory of God and for the refreshment of the spirit. And we do see that, and we talk about how in Philippians 4, 8 and 9, all of those things, whatever is pure and lovely and excellent, commendable, praiseworthy, honorable, just, those are the things that really truly refresh our, refresh our spirits and give glory to God. So we know that all of these accomplishments have taken so much hard work. It takes so much practice and so much work to grow in skills. But God gives the talents. And so that's my heart this year that all of the talents and everyone in this room has talents that God's given. But if we don't use them and we don't grow in those skills, then they're not useful for his kingdom. But when we do, he uses them and he uses them to refresh us, to refresh one another and for his glory. And our fifth graders today are going to close our fine arts assembly with the song, Glory to God Forever. I also want to make one recognition. I want to thank our accompanist for today, Mrs. John Haynes. She has stepped in to, to help us out for our end of the year programs and things, and, and I just want to give her an applause. I'm so grateful for her.
has been such a good morning, and I have to uh, point out some very important people in this room. Um, our ladies here, would you please stand? These ladies are responsible for the vision and for carrying out and working with these children. I don't know if Mr. Scholes is here. He might have went to teach a class. But would you please give a round of applause for these ladies? recognizing this is um, Haynes, but also our tech guys. What a great job. Okay, we have still several um, things to learn today. We have a couple, two and a half hours still of learning, and we want to make the most of the time the Lord has given us. So, uh, let me close this out with prayer, and we'll get on back to class. And uh, teachers, we will dismiss... Uh, We'll let the littles go first towards the back, and then the older classes, if you could go out the wings, uh, we will do that. And parents, if you could just sit tight to let us get on back to our classes first, then you can enjoy the rest of your morning. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for the gift of today and for the opportunity, Lord, to showcase the work that you're doing in the lives of the students in the area of fine arts. It's uh, such a, a gift from you because it's extra um, just as Mrs. Roberts mentioned, it just um, it refreshes our soul and such an opportunity to worship you. And I'm so thankful, Lord, for the boys and girls and the work that they've done and for these teachers and leading. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would help us to have a, a great rest of the day and help us to walk away with refreshed souls and to always have our eyes on you, knowing that all good things come from you and you are the giver of good gifts and you give so generously. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for our time together this morning. And it is in the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. You are dismissed.